What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Bow Nose Real Estate Podcast. I am super excited today because we have Daryl and Raquel Turner on the podcast. Um, and we're going to be talking about something different than what we usually talk about. Usually we talk about social media and real estate and marketing and how to get more business and how to brand yourself. Today is going to be a little bit of a different topic. It's going to be a little bit of a more important topic, I would say. And so we're going to get into that. But before we do, Daryl and Raquel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Bo. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Let's have some fun here. Yep, we're going to have some fun. So before we dive in, um, I just wanted to go through and talk a little bit about what Daryl and Raquel have done with their business and with their lives in the um, in the real estate space. So what we're going to talk about first is Daryl and Raquel um, work with the Daryl Turner Corporation, and they work with title companies and title reps around the country, and uh, specifically 1,400 title companies around the, com around the uh, country, 7,400 title reps, 3,500 escrow officers, 1,300 owners and managers, as well as going around the country and speaking at big events like Alta, and that sort of thing. And so they've obviously built a giant business for themselves. And one of the biggest things that I admire about Daryl and Raquel is that they are the most genuinely happy people that I think I know. So we're going to get into all of that. Um, we're going to really dive into um, the specifics of what it has taken to build a business and to stay as happy as they are um, during that whole time. So before we dive in, Daryl and Raquel, just really fast, introduce yourselves, tell everybody who you are and what you're all about. I'll let you go first, Raquel. All right. Uh, Raquel Turner, Miss Mrs. Daryl Turner, and <laughs> uh, uh, president of the DTC Corporation, um, coach to many escrow leaders, branch managers, few title reps, and um, I'm all about watching other people win. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. That's good. Well, I'm Raquel's husband. As uh, <laughs> every event I go to, they're like, oh, you're Daryl. Oh, you're Raquel's husband. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm Daryl Turner and I've been doing this since 1994, but that's a long time. Um, yep. A long time. And uh, <laughs> the, the whole thing about what we do, really, we love working together. I know we're going to talk about that. We're, we're that unique couple that we're very, very kindred um, in what we do and our goals. But our whole passion about this thing is since the beginning is, is watching people's lives change for the better. Yeah. It fires me up, fires me up. And I, and, and by the way, my, my business partner uh, is amazing and mm -hmm. um, she is my coach. And I think that it's real. I'm going to, I'm just going to say this before we even get into it. Uh, everybody needs a coach and uh, you know, Hey, we own this company and we coach each other and we have outside people that, that yeah. influence us. And I think that uh, what we pour into each other's lives is probably catalyst of, of where we are today and, and where we're going tomorrow. Wait till you hear yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, and to that point, I know <laughs> that being a student of your guys' organization, it's one thing that I've always really enjoyed about what you guys stand for and everything is teaching is different than coaching. Teaching is putting something inside of you. Coaching is bringing something out of you. Mm -hmm. And I know that within your guys' organization, that has helped me in so many different ways um, and so, and we can get into that, but, um, yeah, so I kind of want to kind of start this conversation, um, by first of all, how did you guys meet? <laughs> mm. <laughs> how did we meet? Raquel, I'll let you handle that one. <laughs> how did we meet? Um, we met at a, uh, segment of time where I was actually a title rep for a company that was partnered with the Daryl Turner Corporation. Okay. Right. And um, I spent a, a long stint of my career with that company, 18 years, yeah. where I kind of filtered through every position in a title company. And um, yeah, and my coach was not not Mr. Turner, like some people might think in fact, most of them do. Um, <laughs> that would make for a great story. Though. That would make for a really good story. <laughs> but um, we only met because my coach got injured and we had a big quarterly um, CE class uh, scheduled, which he was going to speak at. And okay. Turner came and filled in. And um, and that was years before we actually got together. Oh, interesting. Years so before. so who pursued who? Mm. Oh, I'm going to let you take this one. All right. I can't run very fast. Let me just say <laughs> that. 
Yeah, uh, we're going into the trenches right now. We're <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love this. This is this is so fun because I love to talk about this because meeting Raquel um, had absolutely nothing to do with us getting together. Which when we when we uh, decided we were going to take this to the next level uh, was one of the best times in my life. Uh, it was this this was one of the best things that happened for me right yeah um and so who decided to pursue who well I kind of have to really talk about how we got together because it was years later and um you know you go through things in your life you find yourself at different phases uh it's fair to say we were both married before and um one day um life changes and uh I got a call out of the blue and um Raquel had asked me to come and speak for the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce? Was that what it was? Yeah. Yep. And I thought, well, it's interesting to hear from Raquel because she's that she's that really pretty lady from Oregon. And, uh, <laughs> so I said, let me check my schedule. Okay, I'll be there. And uh, we started talking after that. And um and it has uh it has been I I can't I can't even call it a roller coaster because it's had no downs. There, right, there yeah. hasn't been any downs. So we we started dating for a while. Uh, yeah. I lived in California. She lived in Oregon. Yeah. And um, I flew a lot to California. I flew a lot to Oregon. She flew a lot to California. Right. But one thing she didn't tell you is that when she was a rep, she was a good rep. I was. And, uh, she had a 30, <laughs> she had a 32% market share. And yeah. one of the reasons why I really only met her one time and didn't really know her was because she wasn't as involved in our program as some of the other reps around, around the company, because they had other right. markets that didn't have great market share. And then one day, uh, she shares this from stages all over the country. One day <laughs> she uh, saw the light and uh, <laughs> she, she saw other people doing well. And she said, you know, I, I really probably should engage this. And, right. and when she left there to move to California to get married to me, um, she had a 72% market share. And yeah, pretty, pretty phenomenal. That's awesome. um, but yeah, so when we got married in 2014, so uh, we are coming up on nine amazing years uh, yeah. coming up this year. So yeah, that's how we met. We, uh, we met and then we didn't see each other for years. And I got a call to speak for the chamber and it was probably looking back in time, the most important phone call I've ever gotten. And I know Raquel would say the same thing, right, Raquel? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. It's it's an amazing story. Um, and that's, I mean, I really didn't, I don't think I really even knew that story. So it was cool to cool to hear. But um, side story, it's funny because I always have to share this when I talk about how people met. My yeah. parents, um, my mom was working at Walmart <clears throat> and my dad was with Highway Patrol. He was a cop. Oh. And so most people can kind of figure out where the story goes, but she was on her way home from work and gets pulled over. <laughs> and, <laughs> and guess who pulled her over? My dad pulled her over <laughs> and then finds out her information, kind of stalks her a little bit with finds out where she works and all those good things. And uh, then, you know, stops by her work and runs into her, you know, and says, Oh, aren't you the person I pulled over? And then, you know, the rest is history. That's, I think, uh, 26 years ago now so it's pretty crazy you know it's crazy how people meet and we'll have to i'll get into how sophie and i met another time uh, okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> well was so actually actually bo that's really funny because uh how i met raquel raquel's two kids was in walmart True oh, really? <laughs> yeah when i when i was in town when i was in town uh doing the chamber of commerce i went to walmart and she was in there with her two kids and i got a oh, line behind God. them and and we, you know, we weren't dating yet. I mean, we, you know, yeah. we, that was like the big, the big connection. And, right. and, um, and that's, how, that's how I met the kids. So Walmart kind of has a lot to do with both our lives, though. Yeah. You know, well, and Walmart kind of has like a, a love thing going on. You know, if you're looking for love, I mean, I don't right. know. Check out Walmart. Right. You never know. Walmart <laughs> has everything. I think Walmart it just turned into a Walmart ad. <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> I think it did. You know, the first timers, they got the sticker on their hand. Though. That's right. <laughs> so um kind of kind of fast forwarding, you know, you you started this business in the in the title space. And mm -hmm. I want to get into how you scaled the Daryl Turner Corporation the way you did. 
um, and, and how it grew to where it's at today. What were some of the things that, that you guys did to accomplish that? Because we all know that the, the title space is an interesting space. I always say it's not a sexy, it's not a sexy space. What? You know? what? Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to break <laughs> it. <laughs> an Ulta policy, there's nothing sexy about an Ulta policy. <laughs> so, you know, how were you able to do what you did with it? Because it's a very uncommon thing. I was telling you guys before that obviously you guys are my favorite coaching for title, the title space. Um, partly because you're the best and then partly because I don't know of anybody else who does it. Right. And so now that being said, there are people out there who do it that are maybe it's not, maybe not a business or a company. It's maybe some, some freelancers or who are out there coaching title reps and stuff like that. But how did you do it? How did you build this big company, this big brand, this business from title? I'm, I think everybody's really curious to know, and I'm excited to hear the answer. So how did you scale that? Well, Bo, I woke up one day and I realized how sexy an alter policy was and that the, <laughs> that, that the whole world, the whole world can benefit from this. Yes. Yeah. The whole world needed to know this message uh, about the, the sexiness of, of title insurance. Yes. Um, it, it's, it's really, it's really interesting how it's a great question because it mentally takes me back to the nineties and I'm just going to say it because everybody's thinking it, Bo. This was before you were born. I'm just going to say this. I mean, it's it's True. so just imagine what the world was like before you were born and we were there. But when I, <laughs> when, I when I started this company, and it was me. And, um, you know, I, I had a I developed a, a, a training program for salespeople in the business and and it worked and it worked well. Right. Uh, but I came to the point, and I think this, this is really a great topic for entrepreneurs out there who have a dream and have a vision. Yeah. Uh, I came to the point that, well, first of all, I left the corporate world to do this, and I was so excited to do this. And, and I replaced my corporate income seven months and 17 days. In seven months and 17 days, yes, I timed it. Um, <laughs> but it's how long it took me to replace my corporate income. Right. And it was a ton of work. My gosh, it was a ton of work. But it was me. I had I had one person kind of assisting me with some things, and yeah. and it was me. And I and I and I built up a, a a really good, healthy client base. I probably doubled my corporate income, but uh, by this point, but I was running out of time. Right. And uh, and there was more companies lining up for the solution, and and right. you know the principle of leverage is is key. You know right. to be able to accomplish more with less and. Yeah. Uh, I had a friend who uh, was actually retired at 29 years old from New York life. Uh, mm -hmm. He was, he was an Amway diamond and everybody knows about Amway and, you know, cause all their friends have called him and tried to get him to sign up to buy lifetime supplies of soap and all this stuff. But uh, my, my buddy, I just called him up. He's like the sharpest guy I knew. And I said, Hey man, I need some help. And he said, what do you need help with? And I told him what I was doing. And, and I said, I'll, I'll totally teach you the model. And, and, um, and so he came on board and I remember the first time he went out to a title company and it wasn't me. I was sweating bullets, sweating bullets. I mean, I was so nervous. Like, right. you know, he's, he's the best and, and at, at, you know, what he does and is he going to be able to do this? And, but I knew that I knew that what we had was all we were going to have if I didn't leverage this thing. And so um, it worked, it worked well. Yeah. And, um, but it was, it was a, it was a scary scary time. And a lot of people, you know, I don't, if, if you ever read the book, The E-Myth, and I'd encourage everybody to read the book. I think it's called The E-Myth Revisited now. It's Michael Gerber's book. It really okay. talks about the three ingredients that are, that are needed, you know, entrepreneur, manager, technician skills. And if you only have one person in the business, you have to have all three of these skills, right? right. And so um, we, we just continued to build that model. And I, I got a phone call one day from a gentleman that um, has now passed, but his he he had the Condell Corporation, which is probably an organization you've never heard of, and he was doing something called the National Title Marketing Conference. It was the first time he ever did it, and um, and he he called one day and he said, "I got I have a copy of one of your tapes, and this is how long ago it was, Bo, a cassette tape. Ask your parents." <laughs> um, and uh, he said, "I have a copy of, of one of your tapes." He goes, "What do you want to do with your business?" You know, and he said, "You want to keep expanding it." And, and uh, I said, well, yes, but we're primarily West Coast, 
couple of coach, couple trainer coaches. And, and he said, if you'll come out here to this conference, um, you, your business will be nationwide today. If you do what's on this tape, mm. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. And he said, do you, do you think you could make it? And I said, like any good wise business person would say, let me, let me check my schedule. And, uh, <laughs> and so I got back to him and I said, yeah, I'm in. And so I went out and he asked me to keynote the opening and keynote the ending. Uh, and from that point forward, uh, we have continued to grow. Yeah. I, I don't know if we've ever, I think we did have one year around 2010. Everybody remembers 2010 in this business uh, where we shrunk a little bit. But um, every year from there, we've continued to grow. We practice what we preach, Bo. We have yeah. a great sales initiative inside the company. We use amazing technology um, to generate leads. We can tell exactly which title company is looking for sales coaching right now right. on the internet. Comes up right. like a stock ticker on our screen. Yeah. Uh, and so but that's that's kind of that's kind of how it happened. And and uh, over the years, we just continued to to develop uh, really good coaches. Uh, right. and, and, you know, some are from the industry and, and some are not. And truthfully, right. it doesn't matter. It's, you know, they're experts at what they do and they're helping people who are experts at what they do uh, right. to continue to grow. But I mean, that's that's how we that's that's how we made it bigger. And, and I think really what it boiled down to was what I call duplication revelation. I know Raquel and I talk a lot about this. I, I woke up one day and I realized that anything I can do one time, I can do infinite times. And when I decide to stop is up to me. Right. So when I got one client that was a regular monthly client, I realized I can get as many as I want. Yeah. And I think that's what people need to know in a market like this, right? Particularly, right. let's talk to title salespeople for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you're, 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 if you're looking for closings, you need orders. And if you need orders, you need more customers. And mm -hmm. you can decide how many customers you have by what you do with your day, every single day. And that's what we're all about as an organization. But that's how, that's how we grew this thing. We continue to do the yeah. same things that work. But, Bo, we continue to add layers to the creativity of how we build it. Right. And can I just out, yeah. a caveat on that is Please. you said we practice what we preach. And, and that is something that is so important to me as we continue to build on the business that, that we're, that we're working on together is all the principles that we coach and teach on the outside, including parts of the process we use to build our own business. Mm -hmm. And right. we actually live that. And, right. and I think that is so important in attracting the right people um, to continually build. Daryl talked about having, you know, bringing one person on and realizing that's not him and being uncomfortable about it. But right. when you have the right processes and systems in place and you have a model and you have the right principles as the backbone of your business, it's, it's, right. it's all about surrounding yourselves with the right people. Right. Well, there's a principle. There's a principle we teach today that I kind of learned in that time. Uh, and if we seek comfort, we will find discomfort. Like mm. people who are always looking to be comfortable in the long term will be very uncomfortable. Uh, the people that are willing to become right. uncomfortable in the long run will be very comfortable. And so when yeah. I found the first person to go out and represent our company and, and work with a title company that wasn't me, right. I cannot explain the level of discomfort that I had. But yeah. today, I can't be happier that I did it. Right. No, that is such a huge point about the being comfortable versus uncomfortable. And you just have to choose your when. Do you want to be uncomfortable now to be comfortable later? Or do you want to be comfortable now and be uncomfortable later? It's a, yes. you know, it's, it's funny because there's all these quotes and all these sayings out there that people love to just say, and they love to, but do they really live it? <clears throat> and it, this is something that, and you can ask my wife, this is something that haunts me like at night and in the dark like am i really living what i'm trying to tell myself every day like the being uncomfortable being uncomfortable to be comfortable like am i being am i uncomfortable today so i can be comfortable tomorrow am i really doing that am i really doing that or am i just saying it and that's another thing i really admire about you guys is that you have proven that you've done that and not only have you done it but you continue to do it Right now, you've just learned better ways to go at it. And I just really, I really love that about you guys. And so one thing that I was curious about, and I'm glad that you brought up cassette tapes, is <laughs> <laughs> how has your organization and the way you guys do things, how has it evolved since the beginning? Has there been things that you have had to let go of and bring new things on? Like what are what have been what have been some of those big transition moments in in the evolution of your guys' business? Well, I'll say the first one and then I'll have Raquel say uh, the next yeah. one. 
we don't sell cassette tapes anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. In fact, in fact, there. I mean, we actually put together some props at one point, and Daryl spoke to this very topic about how change is necessary in business. Right. If you can, I don't know if you can see behind him, but on his shelf, he has like every cell phone from the beginning of time. Oh, and cool. All the yeah. transitional modes that it, that it actually, um, yeah. the looks that we had. We have like a box phone. We have, I mean, we have all of those things and, and yeah. we had them both. Right. right. But, but that's part of it is, you know, we've had to let go of a lot of those things and we have so much memorabilia of all the content yeah. that we've had over the years from cassette tapes to CDs right. to DVDs to, I mean, even print marketing. And and so, yes, you do have to change the way you do business. You have to change the way you're seen in the marketplace. Right. Well, I think it's so cool. Um, I love the, and as you're talking about that later, I will zoom into the phone so everybody can see okay. it and, and catch it. But, um, you know, the way I see it and the way that I have looked at social media because everybody has different thoughts on social media. And I don't want this to become a social media conversation whatsoever, but what I like about what you guys are saying is it's not necessarily what you have at your disposal right now or what you had before, because I think you guys will agree what got you, what got people from here to here is probably not going to get them from here to here, you know, and if you hang on to those different things, it's probably not going to work. Um, and so that's what I love about like the social world at this point is it's just about attention. Like where are people's attention going? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, first it was, you know, everybody was talking about how they didn't need a cell phone. They have this pager and the pager worked just fine. And now we're, now we're here, you know? And so it's just interesting. And I, and I just, and I, and I love hearing about like the evolution of, of how people continue on and how they learn and grow and adapt. And I'm excited to see what's, what's next for you guys. Um, but before we get into that, um, you guys work with salespeople across the country. We already talked yeah. about this. For salespeople in general, whether it's people in the real estate space that we're talking to, whether it's people in the title and escrow space that we're talking to, or lenders who are trying to grow a business, what is the biggest mistake that you see salespeople making in today's sales world? What is the biggest mistake that you're seeing them make? Raquel, you want to take this one? I'm going to let you go first, and then I will I will compliment Clean it you. up. You'll clean it up for me? Clean it up? <laughs> Usually. All right. All right. So uh, probably the biggest mistake, not probably, definitely. How about that? I'm confident in my answer, Bo. Uh, nice. The biggest mistake that we see is not hunting. Mm. People become over-reliant. You know, we just came off of uh, two solid years of, well, I said we just came off. It feels like we just came off of 2020, COVID year, 2021, kind of a COVID year but real estate exploding, right? And um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that may be controversial, but I, I've, I've done some assessing and I, I believe that anywhere from 45 to 65% of all the money people made in the real estate space in 2021 was unearned. 45 to 65%. They didn't do anything to get it. The market was just in their favor, right? And then when the market changes and that goes away, everybody's panicked. They're like, we're in a down market. You know, if you look back at the last 10 years and you just kind of average things out, um, is the market really down? If you compare it to 2021, it is. Right. If you compare it to 2018, not really. You right. know, it's, it's uh, we're just, we're in a normal market. And I think what people forget, because they, we, we it's in our, I think it's our nature. Like when, when times are really good, uh, we tend to get lazy, right? As humans, I, I think, I think anybody's, um, you know, any, 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 this could happen to anybody. And uh, in fact, on, on a, on a big zoom I did uh, last year, I asked, I asked people how, how many raised, I asked them to raise their hand. I had multiple screens of people and I asked them how many spent more money than they should in 2021. <laughs> and I, I'm not, I, I'm not kidding. Like 80% of all the people on there raise their hands, right? Well, why right. would you do that? Well, because you've gotten comfortable, right? And what that right. does is cause you to get a little bit lax in some of your principles and, right. and you know, saving more money than you spend and all this kind of stuff is a good idea, right? But right. I, I really think that what's happened to people is that they got very comfortable the way things were and they forgot yeah. what about what they need to be doing to keep it going. Because, you right. know, look, sales is the highest paying job in the world. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Did actually. you also know that the lowest paying job in the world is sales? <laughs> okay. And, and where you fall in that is up to you. 
Right. You, you can literally make as much money as you want to make in, in sales. So right. I think the biggest mistake people make is they're trying to hold on to what was and they're not grabbing on to what can be. Right. And really what can be is if, if, if they want to increase their income by 25% in uh, 2023, all they have to do is increase their customer base by 25%. Right. But instead they look at the, all their existing accounts and they try to squeeze more out of them right? Without adding more value. And that actually can run customers off. So to me, the biggest mistake I think I see salespeople making is more of an over-reliance because over-reliance equals underachievement always. And, and so thinking about hunting every day, I mean, the best people on our system, Bo, and you know, because you're one of them, you know, the, the, they prospect a minimum of two and up to five and a half hours a day. You, you show me a title rep that, that prospects five and a half hours a day effectively that's pro- that's not working with us, and I'd love to meet them, okay? Because yeah. the average rep in the business prospects <laughs> 24 minutes a day, and that's actually a statistical fact, 24 yeah. minutes a day, and the average rep generates less than one order a month from a new customer. Yeah. Last month, the people on our program generated 8.72, yeah. okay? That's, that's almost 11 times the industry average. What do they do? They hunt. Right. They hunt. They prospect. To me, right. that's the biggest mistake. Let's see if Raquel agrees with me here. No, I totally agree. In fact, <laughs> I was just, I was writing down a couple of things while you were speaking and, and some of the things that we can highlight in that space is over-reliant means a lot of things. We over-rely on our existing customers to, to build our order count. We right. over-rely on our inside people yeah. to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and giving it, right. you know, wowing our customers. And we over-rely on our tools sometimes thinking they're going to sell for us. Mm-hmm. And, and so I totally agree with what you said. Yeah. I think first of all, that hunting is not just something that title salespeople can do. I think it's something that people in the real estate industry can do. I think it's, or, or actual real estate agents can do. I think that it's something that if lenders want to increase their business that they can do, I think it's an overall fact that the more hungry you are and the more you go out and hunt, the better off you're going to be. Now, I do think going back to having somebody like a coach who can help you figure out better ways, more effective ways to hunt is going to be, if you go out into a snowstorm with a, with an all brown camo suit on, you're most likely not going to do super well, but you have to, you have to be equipped, right? I think it's true. I think you have to be equipped to, to get the best results. And um, so, because if not, I feel, I, I do think that you'll get there but I think you'll get there a lot slower than the people who are equipped. Um, The other thing that I wanted to go into was how you hunt. What has been the the best hunting strategy that you guys have seen um, for salespeople? Is there something that you see that stands out? Is it phone calls? Is it email marketing? Is it postcards? Is it social media? Is it, what has been the number one thing that you've seen above, above all else when somebody commits to doing this thing, it ends up being the most effective thing for them. Is there something that you guys have seen? You mean other than our system? Uh, yeah. So like a like other than the system, is there something that like um, like hitting the phones hard with a strategy, hitting social media strategy hard? Is it uh-huh. is it doing doing farming? Is it what is something that you guys have seen from from your reps that stands out? Great, great question. Raquel, you want to take it? You want me to take it? What do you want to do here? What do you want to do here, sweetheart? You go ahead. <laughs> I can see your wheels are turning. Um, well, let's, and I, you can clean this up. I'll say this and then you, you clean it up um, at the end for me. But I think people need to understand the, the three basic pillars, I guess, of, of business development. Okay. And the, the first pillar is advertising. Okay. Advertising would be like, you know, running ads, billboards, things like that. Uh, Advertising gets people to see you. Marketing gets people to know you. Sales gets people to do business with you. And I I think, you know, another mistake, and this may not be the biggest, as I said a little while ago, I think the biggest is the lack of hunting. And this this may actually be contributing to that, is the over-reliance on marketing. Mm. Marketing is a lubricant for the sales process. And, you know, we were at Mastery last year, Bo, I think it was last year when I, when I told the audience, you know, everybody has an app, everybody has all these tools, they're, they're all talking about the same things, and, and everybody feels like their app's different, but it's probably made by one of four or five different companies, right? Um, right. And, and that's all under marketing. And I, I said, you know, I, I remember saying to the audience, you know, how many of you pray? And, 
and and most of them raised their hand and i said you need to you need to start saying this prayer dear god please never let there be a marketing tool that sells for me okay because the minute a marketing tool sells for you which is what most people are looking for okay right, right. Well, the minute something sells for you you're not needed and a, a marketing tool or marketing in general including in, including social media um, is a lubricant for your sales process. So, so what's super important is engagement. Okay. Engagement with your prospects and customers, conversations, uh, rule, right. And having effective conversations and knowing how and when to ask for business and how to right. do discovery and all those things, super important. But, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, it really boils down to our formula, which I know, you know, there's a sign in our lake house in California that says M times S equals R math yeah. multiplied by skill equals results. You yeah. know, you're, if your math is right, the quantity of quality prospects engaged right. and your skill set is good, you'll have good you'll have good results. But but right. at the end of the day, I mean, when you look at when you look at marketing and you look at social media, let me just explain to people that, you know what, what social media is a new website because I'm going to go back to the 90s. OK, a website in the 90s was Instagram because that's where you went. That's where you went to look uh, up people. That's where you went to look up company information. Uh, and that's migrated to the palm of your hand in Instagram today, right? And it's real time and it's fresh. And, you know, maybe there's people on Facebook that are that are watching this. And mm -hmm. that's the new website. That's where we go. Um, that's where we are. That's where we go for information. That's also where we're entertained. It's where we're seduced. Let's just say it. I mean, you know, I, I watch I watch Raquel. She doesn't know she's scrolling, you know, scrolling on her phone. And And there's been times, Bo, when I'm going to call her out right here, there's been times when I've seen her look away at something and her thumb keeps moving. <laughs> okay? and, and it's like, she doesn't even know she's not looking at her phone right now, but that that's, that's where, that's where it all resides. Right. That's it. It all comes back to what is occupying my attention right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I think that the, the best strategy or the best methodology back to your question is to do everything you can to increase your quality engagements, but right. never think that anything will replace the need to engage your prospects and customers. And right. I, I, I see that in a lot of people today, Bo. I see they're <laughs> looking for that thing that's going right. to do it for them. And I hope they never find it because they'll be out of work. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Raquel, having you want to clean, clean that up? I don't think we need to clean that up. I, I think that um, social media has definitely come into play a key in all of that. Um, you're absolutely right when you say that, you know, social media is definitely the new website. We're all looking for the impressions. And I just had that conversation yesterday, advertising, marketing, and sales with a rep who was bringing forward an, an agent who killed it in 2020 and 2021 as a brand new agent like right. literally killed it, but now is, is struggling to figure out next steps. And if, if they don't understand that formula, first of all, and, and what, what falls into those categories, they'll never have the skill set they need to be successful in this space right. or mm -hmm. any space for that matter. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Skill set is a focus in that space. Engagement requires a skill set. Right. Well, well and that's, the, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It's your well, show, man. It's your show. <laughs> that's, I mean, that was the, that's the whole reason and, and mindset that I have with social media is first of all, it is about the engagement. I think you, you had mentioned it, Daryl. It's for me, it's conversations. Mm -hmm. It's, it's what you talk about when you, when you say math, right? When you have math and skill, you're going to get results. And so, mm -hmm. but the more at bats you get, the more you're going to learn what works and what doesn't. So the more conversations you can have, you're going to start to figure out if you don't have a coach, if you do have a coach, you're like I said, it's going to speed up that process. Yeah. You're going to have more effective conversations. But if you're not willing to go out and hunt and have more conversations and just expect for the conversation to come to you, it's not going to happen. I use what you say all the time, Daryl, when you say it's not your, it's not their job to do business with you. It's your job to do business with them. And so it's not their responsibility to come to you and try to start up a conversation about how you can help them. It's your job to go out and have a conversation with them about how you can help them. And so the more you can do that, that's what I love about social media. Everybody, there's a lot of people who think I'm in love with social media because I'm young and I grew up with it and blah, blah, blah. When in reality, if social media died today, I would be more, I would be ecstatic. 
I would be okay. Now, what's what has people's attention now? Now we're gonna go find it. Is it newspapers? I'll, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be a newspaper. I'm gonna be a newspaper printing machine, right? Because <laughs> that's where the that's where the attention is, right? It's not social media. It's where is the attention at of consumers? Right. Go there and be in front of them and start sparking conversations with them, and and building relationships and seeing how you can help and and hunting right? Going out there and hunting. So, uh, but you were going to make another comment. Well, yeah, what I was, what I was going to say is like, look at real estate, you know, in 2021. Um, and, and if you're, if, if you're watching this and you're a, a real producer, you're, you'll appreciate this. And if you're not, I'm about to make you mad. But in 2021, all, all you needed to make a, a decent living anyway, in real estate was a real estate license and a pulse. I mean, there were people lining up to sell. There were people lining up to buy. I mean, it was just, it was all right there, right? And right. if you take a look at when people get into real estate, I can predict um, which people are going to more naturally be successful. They're the ones that got in at the bottom of the market. Right. The ones that get in at the top of the market learn to rely on the wrong thing, right? What we call market mirroring. If the market is up, the the, the, the desire to learn marketing skills goes down. Mm. But when the market is down, you you have to learn these skills, right? right. You have to You have to be on the cutting edge. And right. the people that got into business like in 1981, which was a really, really long time ago, right. uh, in 1995, in 2009, and right now, I mean, all these are 14 years apart, by the way. I don't know if you ever thought about that. 81 to 95 is 14 years. 95 right. to 09 right. is 14 years. 09 to 2023 is 14 years. So predictable cycles. But people that get in like right now, if, it, if somebody became a real estate agent today, they stand a very, very good chance of finding success because there's no business handed to them. You have uh, to go, you know, and and, yeah. and the way to make money in this business is to realize that they who possess the invisible possess the paycheck. So, like I, I was right. I was listening to to my friend Mike Ferry, you know, Mike. I was listening to to Mike a few years ago, and 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 um and maybe this was even on a conversation that he had with me. I don't remember where I heard him say it, but he said, you know, the lack of inventory. We we don't we don't have an inventory problem. Everybody's complaining about an inventory problem, even though and we have an inventory shortage. We don't have an inventory problem. The inventory problem is a result of the problem. The inventory is a result of the problem. The problem is somewhere along the way, he, and, and don't don't get mad at me, Bo audience here. Uh, this is Mike Perry, <laughs> so if you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at my buddy Mike. But he said somewhere along the way, real estate agents have pulled back on their you know eight hour a day drive to acquire listings. Right, eight hours a day to acquire listings. I mean, if that's what's missing, they who possess the invisible possess a paycheck. Right, if that's what's missing. That's your job. Right, but. So, so, you know, it's really, it's all about how we push out there and how we, right. and I think the, the, one of the, one of the main points I really want to make there is, is that if you got in this market in 20 and 2021, pretend like you didn't Re right. real, realize that you better put everything into learning how to make a living today, right. because if you can learn how to make a living today, whether you're entitled real estate mortgage, it doesn't matter. Your living tomorrow will, will be so much easier. If you just right. focus at the at, at the bottom of a cycle, because I believe we're at the bottom of a cycle here, focus on being successful in this market, you'd be successful in any market. Yeah, that's amazing advice. It really is because anybody who's been in the industry the last five years saw it where it was 2017, 18, 19 ish, and it was kind of a normal market. 21, 20, 21, 22 hit phenomenal markets. I mean, hit, like historically, some of the best markets that we've seen. Right. You don't have to be in the industry forever to look at data that shows that this was one of the best markets ever. And now we're back to a normal market. And everybody's kind of tripping. So it's I don't know why I said tripping. I never say that. But everybody's kind of like <laughs> everybody's kind of freaking out, you know. And so I just it's it's great advice. If you did get started in, in 2021, 22, act like you didn't. I think that's I think that's that's huge. Um, so. I agree with you. And I think that more people need to have the mindset of the business is out there. I just have to go get it. Nobody's bringing it to me. Yeah. And the people who really believe that, that don't just say it on a podcast to sound cool. The people that really believe it and go out there and live it and go find it and go hunt for real. Um, there's not a lot out there, but the ones that are, they stand out. And, oh, yeah. and what's cool about it is this, is if anybody's listening, and I'm just and I'm just going off of what Dale just said. If you're listening out there and you're in real estate or lending or in the title space and and right now you haven't been a big hunter, you really haven't had that fire. There's nothing that that says that you can't start that right now, right mm -hmm. this minute. Start going through your contacts and finding people that you haven't talked to in a while and call them. Like there's no 
there's nothing holding you back from becoming who you want to be in the industry that you're in. That's what's, that's, what's nice about it. That's what's cool is that you can be a hunter right now. And I, I'm getting all fired up on this one. You are. <laughs> you are. But let, let's, hey, but let me ask you a question though. Let's, let's maybe talk about this. I think this is super important. I know, yeah. I know people that they hunt like crazy and they were so into their business, but they hate their life. And, um, and I know, I know people that know they're doing the best job they can, uh, yep. and they, they love their life. And yep. I think, you know, I know that, that, uh, like with Raquel and I, I mean, we, we, we love what we do, but I think, I think if we, if we, if we weren't doing what we feel is best right. for our business and for our clients, I, I think that we wouldn't feel good about it. And I, I don't know any other I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, our revenues are good. Our client base is large. Right. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's a, I think that happiness and joy that someone finds in their business, I, I think really has to do with, are, are they, or part of it anyway, has to do with, are, are they really doing what they need to be? Are they, are, are they feeling fulfilled because they've, they've achieved what they need to achieve right. that day because, because they're putting their true heart and passion into it. Right. Um, because again, I mean, I, I've met, man, I've met, multi-millionaires that are miserable and and so you know if, if people are viewing this today and they're like i'm not a multi-millionaire and and you know i'm not the happy as i can be um right. I, I you know the finding that joy in what you do every day and i've actually talked to people and i've said you need to change careers i've actually told people that like you need to change right. careers because you've decided there's n you're not enjoying this like right you, and 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 i'll just i'll just say this winning is fun and and when we're winning, I think it's easier to find happiness or that perception of happiness. But at the right. end of the day, fulfillment is what creates that that true happiness in what you're doing. And and right. I think maybe what a great great transition to talk right. a little bit about life. Huh? You got a couple. You got a couple life questions for me there, Bob. I do, and <laughs> it's funny because it, it is it perfect. It's almost like you did it on purpose because it's it's a perfect transition, and I want to get into it because, uh, like I said in the beginning, you guys are a perfect display of exactly that. And I think there's more to it than, than just being happy to be happy. And I really want to get into it because it's, it's an interesting topic. Um, and so first of all, let's just start it off right off the bat. How have you guys, Daryl and Raquel, how have you guys figured out the balance between what you do in your business and building and expanding and scaling, as well as being able to be home and really enjoy it and be able to laugh and enjoy food and enjoy the sunshine. Like how have you guys been able to do both? Because like you had mentioned, there's people who out there who are multimillionaires, billionaires who haven't figured it out. How have you guys done it? I'll let the boss take this one. <laughs> well, I think COVID helped us a little bit because there was a point in time where we were both moving really, really fast and the and 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 that allowed us to enjoy the time we had together but we were spending most of the weeks apart because of travel requirements of our business so going back to kind of how we've adapted and scaled that played a big part of that right. i will honestly tell you i think the biggest daryl said two words that just jumped off the page at me and i, I kind of pick up on words when people are speaking and he yeah. said joy and choice and and that's truly important to me it, it's my choice to to make a decision every single day to put forth what I need to get that joy out of what I do right. and and so uh, and I think we both have an element of um I guess expectation in ourselves to to kind of infect other people that way um right. and and so I think that that is truly important I'm not great at the balance Bo I'm just not because I'm so passionate and enjoy what we do so much that I find that boundary to be a little difficult to hold sometime. Right. And, and can I ask Raquel, you. Raquel, I want to ask you, did you know that you scroll social media and not looking sometimes? I do. <laughs> I do. I catch myself doing it all the time. And, and here's the thing. I, I, I will, I'm pretty good at multitasking. If there was something that was important there, I would probably see it, but I do, <laughs> I do do that. I do. And it's so, little things like that, Bo, that he notices little things like that. Right. That um that that help us to find that that passion in and in, in our personal lives as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Daryl. 
Well, Raquel, when you said we were moving really fast before COVID, uh, what does that mean? What 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 did that look like? Airplanes and sleeping in hotels and you going one way and me going another. In the beginning, we talked about how we used to go directly to our clients. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even in 19, we were still doing pieces of that with certain clients that we would visit on a regular basis. And 2020 put a halt on that. Yeah. Right. Well, so you, you were, I mean, you were at mastery, you know, our events are fun and they're oh, not yeah. all, they're not all like that, but before COVID let's just, let's just play a game here. Let's play Bo knows. Let's play Bo guesses. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, be before, before COVID Bo, how many live events do you think we were doing a year? I would say um, like you guys, your organization. Either we're speaking at one or it's ours. Usually we're speaking at something that's happening in the, in the industry. 10. You think we did 10 a year before COVID? Yeah. Raquel, you want to tell them? <laughs> I will let you tell them. Between 100 and 125, <laughs> Bo. Really? So we, we were doing, we were doing. This is, this is the Bo No Show, not the uh, Bo, Make Bo Look Stupid Show. So <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I called it Bo Guesses. So you're off the hook, Bo. I was going, but in a month. And everybody. you made me look dumb. So podcast over. <laughs> it was like every week, but we were out. We were out. And usually we would travel to either Wednesday through right. Friday and get home Friday, come back, work a couple of days in the office and head back out. And it was, it was hectic. Yeah. And there was, and if we did two in a week, we would leave Monday, do two events in a week and be back on Friday night. So COVID hit. And because there was a period of time and, and Raquel and I love, spending time together well i'm speaking for myself kel do you like it we love it okay <laughs> i just want i just want to hear that um and and so when we were running that fast we literally were talking like how are we going to put the brakes on this thing yeah and then COVID hit and that's how we put the brakes on this thing right. and uh we had a hashtag for a while we put in our social media i will not go back and so now we do yeah. about 25 i'm guessing kel maybe 25 events a year yeah. and we, we we're really picky about where we go and where we speak and 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 right. what we do um because i think you know raquel's mentioning you know before covid this it was we we're really moving fast i think it's i think it's good for people to know what fast look like yeah, and i mean we lived right. on airplanes we yeah. you know we we both were well over 1k with united which is 100,000 miles a year i mean we blew past that i think i think i blew past it like in may one year um you know and <laughs> i did two hundred and seventy five thousand miles in a year and there there's people probably watching that have done more, than, more than that I, you're living you're living on an airplane and you're you know you're staying at hilton's and and you're getting home so you can you know uh re-unpack or unrepack re-unpack um and go again and so now uh you know we work from home we move to nevada we spend every day together a lot of people are like gosh how do you do that we do it because we like to we do it because we want to. And, um, you know, it's, it is, it is truly a choice. We, we have similar passions. Uh, we both believe in people. Right. And we both believe in the possibilities of people. And right. we have a life mission to help people find their destiny and find what they're really made for. And right. I, I think, you know, to me that, that, that joy and that happiness that it, it, it comes from that. And, Right. And, you know, we've, I think everybody has had times when, well, I know this, everybody has had times when they didn't have enough money. And so to them, what's the goal though? Money. Got to make money. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you'll have people tell you, you know, money's not everything. And, and, um, and there's people listening right now that would totally resonate with that. You know, they've made great money and they, they realize there's other things that, that become more important and don't get me wrong. I mean, if you don't have enough money to pay your bills then you, you know, chase money for a little while because you're going to need it yeah. by the end of the month. Right. But when you get to a certain <laughs> point where, and people look at our life and I, I remember, I remember um, somebody said, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to if I had your life. And, and I remember asking the person, which do you think came first? My happiness or my life? Right. And, and right. they said, well, well, your life. And I said, well, you're wrong. My, mm -hmm. my choice to be happy created my life. My, you know, it's not it, it, people with a million dollars in their bank account. I mean, they didn't just right. wake up one day and have a million dollars in their bank account. They did some things to get there. Right. And, 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 and hopefully right. people watching this today are doing what they love 
um, are are realizing that. And let, let's go back to social media for a minute. You know, people see social media and they're like, they look at pieces of people's lives, right? right. And 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 they're like, that's their whole life. No, that's not. That's the yeah. portion of their life they want you to see. <laughs> right. right. All right. right. So, um, and I, I think we, you know, we could be easily seduced by that or deceived by that. And right. and I just, I, I really think that, you know, true success in life has nothing to do with education. It has nothing to do with the size of your company has nothing to do with how much money you make or have. I think true, true success has to do with how you can appreciate yourself and your relationships and where you are and not overlook those because at, for a business person to be in love with building their business, it would be very easy to neglect their spouse. It would be right. very easy to neglect their kids. It's not, not, uh, maybe easy is the wrong word, but they realize when they look back, right? We have, we have five kids. Uh, I call them kids. Our oldest is 37. Okay. And, um, and our youngest is 18 and we have four grandkids and, and we can look at our kids and look at our grandkids. And to me, like, that's like this, that's success right there. You, everybody's right. doing great. Um, you know, they're healthy, which has nothing to do with us. Uh, but they're living their best life and they're working hard and they're achieving what they want to achieve. Right. And, you know, to me, I can look back and say, Raquel, that is, that is, that is an indication of success right there is to be able to see it in the next generation and the next generation after that. Right. True. How's that for a deep answer? It's very deep, but, the, but it hasn't always been that balanced. Like right now, I do feel like we have a better balance of, of, of that level of attention to, to our family and everything. There's been times in our lives where we weren't as balanced. Right. I mean, when my kids were young, they were attending title company events and uh -huh. <laughs> <they> were commerce <laughs> events. And, but you know, look at now they're, they're successful and, and diving deep into their own careers and, and, and have an appreciation for that, that right. work ethic. So uh, balance is difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so true. I, I think that what you guys are both talking about is so important for people to remember because it isn't always about the title that you have. It isn't always about the success that you have or how big your business is or about how much money is in your bank account. And I think all of those things play factors in people's happiness, but it's obviously not everything, mm -hmm. you know, because if you do have, if you do have a spouse and kids and family and all those things, and you focus too much on the success and the business and the money, something your family is going to be neglected, and then vice versa, right? If you care, if you cared too much about just always having a good time and not ever wanting to build a life for yourself and work hard and make more money and and do these different things, then then that side of things will be neglected. So that's why I wanted to have you guys on was because you guys have seemed to figure out a really good balance between the two. You've built a great um, business and you guys have a little bit of a cheat code as well, because you are both equally as invested in the business, right? And most people don't have that type of thing. So, I mean, I think everybody can applaud you for, for, you know, having the same goals and having the same mindset to where I know we talked about this before, you know, you guys have your executive meetings in the hot tub, right? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, and good. Hey, we can elaborate though. Who's there? It's just the two of us. Okay? <laughs> it's just, the two. we don't, we don't invite all of our executives to our hot tub. <laughs> yeah. And so it's cool, you know, and it's, and it's cool because like, um, it's, it's cool to think, you know, that you guys have this system of, of being able to turn it on when it needs to be turned on and then you guys are able to turn it off when it's time to turn it off. But I don't think turning it off is something that you guys do as much as people think. I think you guys, you guys are so passionate about what you do and it shows if, if, if a title, if a title industry person hasn't attended title sales mastery, then they, they probably don't know what I'm talking about as far as the passion that you guys have for this industry and for the people that you work with. I mean, you guys give so much more than you take. I mean, seriously, like, and I don't, I mean, I don't ever see you guys asking or, or doing anything as far as having things returned back to you. Just don't, you know, and I just think it's really cool. So, um, but 
but that was a big reason, you know, I wanted to have you guys on was because I, first of all, wanted to applaud you for being able to do, it. I know, I, I know I bring this up a lot with you guys. It's because I mean it, you know, I really do. I think it's just cool to see two people who are on the same page working towards a goal and at the same time, really, really helping people around them. So great job. Thank you. I, I, I want to throw a couple of things in there too, that, that came up. Um, we were in the hot tub in an executive meeting one time, and I just held up my hand like this. Raquel, do you remember when I held up my hand like this? I totally goes, know this. She goes, what, what, stop? And I go, I just held it up. I didn't say anything. And she goes, five? And I'm, I'm like, mm -hmm. she goes, five minutes, and you don't want me to talk about work? Just five minutes. <laughs> and I said, mm -hmm. she made it like two, Bo. <laughs> and, um, and it's not that I, not that I didn't want to talk with her about it. I just thought it was funny. I just wanted to see if it could be done. And, but the reality is if, if we didn't like it, we wouldn't talk about it. Right. right. We, we, we yeah. wouldn't be thinking about that, but here, here's really what I, I think underlying message I want to say to all of this, um, balance is a choice. I, I, I mean, when, when I was 40 years old, I was out of balance. I mean, it was, I was building a business. Um, I, you know, my, my kids were, were younger at that time of obviously a lot younger. Um, and I, I can look back and say, I was, I was out of balance. And I can also look back now with the wisdom of today, this color in my hair is wisdom. That's the color. It's not great. <laughs> it's called wisdom. Um, I can, I, I, can I can openly admit <laughs> that, um, I was out of balance, but at that time you couldn't tell me that. Right. You couldn't tell me I was out of balance, but I look back and I was out of balance and I, and I can, I can look back and say, that was a choice I made. And a lot of people say they really want balance to their life. Do you want it bad enough to get it? Because if you don't obtain it, you didn't want it bad enough. And it is a quote, what we seek, we find, right? And so, you know, putting, putting balance in what we do every day. Um, I, I'll tell you, balance is not 50-50. It's 100-100. And a healthy marriage, like between Raquel and I, this, my, my relationship uh, with Raquel is amazing. And I mean, I, I can't tell you, we say to, we say to each other all the time, like not enough people get to experience this. Yeah, and, we, we remind and, you of that. But it, I, I believe a large underlying factor of this, and Raquel, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we're not in this 50-50. We're in this 100-100. Right. And I think that is part of why, I mean, we love spending time together. We love doing things together. Like the other day, um, she had an appointment and I went and flew our airplane, did a little practice landings, right? But I don't want to go without her. And, and she doesn't like to fly the pattern and just practice because, well, let's just say it, Raquel, why? Why? Because I get motion sick. <laughs> she, loves, <laughs> she loves to fly around. But if I'm just doing these circles and landing and take off and landing, and she's like, no, 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 I don't want any part of it. I don't even want to go do that unless she has something else she needs to do. Now, a lot of people will say, well, gosh, that's unhealthy. That's, there's no balance here. But that's what we want. Right. And, and we have to, we look at like, how do we get to the point where we're kindred, we give a hundred, hundred, we're both passionate about the same things. And, and the other person's feelings matter a lot. And right. what, what we think they're thinking, um, what we think they're feeling, we respond to without even verifying it because right. we're probably right. And I think hindsight plays a part in that. I mean, like you just said, when you were in your forties, you were not in balance. Like you, you have more balance now than you did then, as did I. I mean, there have been times in my life too. And so hindsight does play a big part in that for right. sure. Yeah. Yep. It no, I, I said it. it sounded what different when that? I said it. <laughs> no, you're very eloquent. Are you, are you telling me I was out of balance? My... <laughs> <laughs> you already said that. <laughs> Yeah, we, no, we I wouldn't just, be here if you weren't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, you know, um, that's exactly the the points that I wanted to touch on with you guys because I think it's a I think it's a common thing in the business world, whether you're just an entrepreneur trying to build a business or you're in the real estate space, whatever the case may be, it's it really does come down to the balance. And I mentioned this before earlier in the podcast that saying things is easy. So saying I need balance, saying that balance is the most important thing, saying that I need to spend more time with family and less time with work or vice versa. Saying things is easy. You know, like the, the, the saying talk is cheap. It, it really is. And for, for a lot of people, I feel like it's, it's just something to say to sound cool when you're talking in a group of people or on a podcast or, or whatever. But it's more important that you figure out how to live it. And this is something yeah. that like, it's like Sophie and I constantly are trying to talk about this, right? Like what is the best way that we can really 
make sure that we're always on the same page. And if we're not like figure out how to get on the same page and, and really be really have that balance, not to just say it, but to live it and experience it. So we have the best quality of life, yes. right? Because that's, that's full circle quality of life, not just quality of life. When I'm talking to people who really could care less about me, like when you start talking about how great your life is and how successful you are just to impress people that you don't even like, yeah. And then you go home and your life is miserable. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't make sense to me. But people right. are so, so into the vanity and so into what do other people that I don't really even care about, and they for sure don't care about me. Why do I care more about that than I do about my own quality of life? Like yeah. truly. Yeah. And so I just, I mean, that's what I've been thinking a lot about in the past couple, past year or two, you know, really as, as people, you know, progress in their careers and or wherever they end up going. And, you know, how do you, how do you maximize the quality of life? I really love it when I see people who have really great careers and making a lot of money and doing all these big things and then stop and go live in the woods just with their family. <laughs> <'Cause that's laughs> what I you think know? authenticity is kind of what I'm hearing you talk a lot about, but it's super important to you to have that authenticity in your world. And that's something that's really important to us too. Right. And you know, for you and Sophie, I think it's just really active listening and listening to understand and, and hear and support each other is, is yeah. key for sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And so um, I think everybody will, will get a lot out of this, whether, whether they have a spouse or they don't, and they're talking about different family or, or they need to go harder into hunting into their <laughs> business and then the balance of it all. I think it was, uh, I think that was a perfect way to kind of wrap this whole thing up. We started with how, how people are, are, are not living their max potential in their business. And then we wrap it up with, but that's not all that matters. We need to have balance all the way around because we only get one shot at this life thing. And so we, we, it's important to, to be fulfilled and have a great business and, and make the money we want to make, but it's also important to find that balance to where we have a great relationship with our, with our spouse and with our kids and yeah. to where it's just a full circle, uh, happiness life. And, um, I'm glad that we were able to chat about this. Any, any closing thoughts? Cause I know we're a little bit over time, but I, I want to make sure that, that you guys are able to close everybody out. Well, I think, um, I, I think I'll let Raquel wrap this up. She'll clean up what I say for me. Right. Again, Raquel, but I, I really think that I'm saddened when I meet business people that say, you know, my business is my life. Or I live this and um, our business is not our life. I'm just going to say that our business is very successful. We have amazing staff. We have the best staff we've ever had in the history of the company. Um, this, we're, we, we operate very closely. You know, they call it the family. But just, we're just very close. We have great people. Um, our, you know, our revenues are good. Our, our, what our business brings us is good, but our business is not our life, right? Our business is part of our life, right? And if, if our business went away tomorrow, our life would still be great, right? And, and don't get me wrong. If our business went away tomorrow, we would build another one because <laughs> we know how, right? right? But, but I really, I think that's, that's what I really want to say to kind of wrap up my segment here with you, Bo, is that, that if make your business part of your life and if and here's the thing if your business is unhealthy then part of your life is unhealthy mm -hmm. right and, but but it's not your whole life and our business is not our whole life even though we spend the majority of our waking hours thinking about it or operating in it it's it's not it's it's not our whole life it's just a part right. of it right well and i think what you're saying is is when you build your business around real principles yeah that that is a crossover naturally right Absolutely. And I think it's, I think it's interesting to go off of what you guys are saying right now. If your home life and your personal life is healthy, that most likely is going to help enhance your business. Life. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. And yes, it's, yes. and it's, and, and vice versa, but I do think it comes down to who's the, who are the people that you talk the most to, who are the closest people in your life personally? Do you have healthy relationships with them? And, and I, you know, it's funny because I, I think that you guys are saying this right now, or I know you guys are saying this right now, your family personal life is going to enhance your business life. For sure. But most people think it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. 
the the more I spend time on my business, the more money I make, that's going to en- enhance my personal life. Yeah, I think it's it, the other. Well, it won't fit. It won't. It won't fix a bad relationship. Yeah. In fact, if anything, it'll make it worse. Right. Yeah. But a good, but but a good personal family life and experiences will most likely help enhance your business. So. Yeah. What a way to close it up. I really think that's that's so huge. Um, I thank you guys once again for joining me on the podcast. I know we had planned this for a couple of weeks. Um, and I know that there's some people that are actually really excited to listen to this one. Um, and so I thank you truly. Um, I really appreciate you guys for, for coming on and then for everything else that you do for myself. Um, and for anybody that is watching for the first time, my name is Bo Bullard. I am with the best title company in the world, Pioneer Title Agency. And, um, this has been great. You guys, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. And, um, everybody who listens or watches stay tuned for more because there's going to be a lot of content coming from this podcast and I'm excited to share it with you. So thank you guys. And we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, Bo. Thanks, Bo.